As capitalism goes from crisis to crisis, bosses have gone on the offensive against pay and conditions across the UK. But workers are responding to these attacks with increasingly militant fightbacks of their own. A strong example of this is the workers of St Mungo's Housing and Homeless Charity, who were recently forced into indefinite strike action against their employers. We headed down to the picket lines and rallies to find out more about their struggle, asking the question, how did these events develop? Yeah, so our pay dispute has been going on for 18 months. I think it's important to say that this is not about pay, this is about working conditions, and this is ultimately about the safety of our clients. We've been asking for a 10% pay rise, which at this point is quite out of date. We've had inflation that's been over 12%, and in real terms we've actually lost 30% as frontline workers over the last 10 years while the senior management has increased their salaries by over 385% in the same time period. Um, so you have this massive pay inequality in the organisation. I think we're trying to address that. We're trying to negotiate. You know, we've come up against a real belligerence from senior management who have kind of constantly said, you know, it's financially unviable, despite the fact they clearly find the money for, for senior managers. We, you know, we said enough is enough. We're going on strike. Um, we announced some definite action recently, uh, just because senior management still kind of refused to, to come to the table. Um, things that like they might be changing a bit now. Um, but yeah, we sort of said, well, as long as we're not getting a decent pay off we're going to keep going. After 18 months of struggle and a decade of worsening conditions, the workers finally decided that enough was enough. For me, for example, when I entered, so I get 25 days annual leave, but before that was 28. Before we would have two night workers in my service, now people are alone working at night. Also really, really important, our teams have been like stripped apart. So we would have specialist workers, we would have mental health workers, we would have substance use workers, we would have activity workers, and none of that exists anymore. We cannot keep duty workers. They're the ones who run the building. The building has been falling apart. Uh, it's well known, it's a really old building, it's an old workhouse and we've had leaks in the kitchen that have lasted for months. Because we go through duty workers so quickly, <laughs> these leaks and other issues, you know, smashed windows, broken doors, they take months to fix sometimes. And it's really frustrating because the duty worker, that's the lowest paid role in our service. So we can't keep hold of them. A lot of them have left in sort of anger. Some of them have moved over to other jobs because they just need more money to get by. It was only after senior management's refusal to negotiate and their belligerent tactics to attempt to break the strikes that forced the workers to take the drastic measure to take indefinite action and start making the radical demands to open up the books. I work for an organisation that pays their CEO more than the Prime Minister and senior management has increased their salaries significantly. So obviously the money is there, it's just distributed in a very specific way. And if I look at the developments over the last years, that means just eroding frontline services and we're supposed to be a frontline organisation. So I think it's absolutely crucial that we step up at workers at this point. This is not about pay, this is about saving what we can of these frontline services. So from the start of the negotiation, I think one of the key demands has been that some Mungos show their accounts. The last accounts we can see say there's 22 million in reserves. If what we're being told by senior managers is that there's only 11 million, 10 million left. Something serious has happened and we can't see any explanation of what's happened. We can't move forward with negotiations unless they're, unless they're going to be open, so we have to force their hand. Because whether or not there's the money there to pay us, we need to know if there's not, something very serious has happened and we need to know as well. So it's just as important that we keep demanding to see those accounts. Our reps had a meeting with our CEO two days ago and had to leave after 20 minutes because continuously from the beginning throughout they were verbally abused. This is not a way to have negotiations. You know, they're, they're going to sort of try and divide us. And, and you get this a lot in the charity sector, I suppose. They'll try and sort of uh, use, you know, people's sort of own goodwill against them. So they'll say, you know, your clients are going to suffer because of this. It's going to cause a lot of disruption. And we've always been really clear that, you know, what causes clients disruption in the long term is the high turnover. It's the, the fact that, you know, every sort of client has experienced all the, the instability of their, their key worker having to leave because they can't afford their bills. But, you know, they're, they're not getting enough pay. Um, their workloads are you know, too high. And so clients have been incredibly supportive. Clients know we're striking. And, we, you know, we've, uh, they understand that we're not just striking for us, but we're striking for them as well. You know, we're striking because we want to be able to sort of stay and do the work that we're all passionate about. We want to be able to help our clients. Um, and so we've seen an amazing amount of support on the picket line in stark contrast to what senior management have uh, tried to, you know, try to sort of say is that, you know, that we don't care about our clients. And it's just complete nonsense. Uh,
it's clear that this is not purely a dispute about pay, but about bigger trend of conditions for all frontline workers suffering, while bosses find more and more money for themselves. It's all part of a bigger trend of sort of, you know, resources just being and sucked towards kind of the central bureaucracy and away from frontline services. So yeah, it's, it's for the heart of the organisation, is what we've always said. It's for pay, but it's for to make sure it sort of remains, you know, what it was set up for, right, to, to help sort of homeless people, not sort of to, you know, to... To, to pack the pockets of, uh, of, sort of senior managers. It's really, really important to emphasise that if we want the services to continue, proper services to be provided, workers need to be paid properly. A lot of people say they, they can't afford to do this job. They love this job, but they can't afford to do it because they can't pay their bills. And I want this to change, and I know we can change it. As bosses continue to belligerently protect their profits during periods of economic crisis, and with no solidarity for workers being found across the pillars of the political establishment, more and more layers of the working class will be dragged into these disputes. But the workers of St. Mungo's are showing the way forward. Strong organisation, militant demands and definite action and resolve.